All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. We've got a, a nice session with Tanya Gova from Crampton Consulting. Hi, Tanya. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so um, it's great to have Tanya here today with us because we're going to have a half-hour session on all things inventory. So we're going to be looking at the pitfalls, the opportunities, um, maybe get into some of the, the lingo and, and different um, words that we hear that, you know, we, we might need to pay more attention to than what we have been. Um, so Tanya has um, got quite a history in the veterinary industry. Um, she's definitely been very hands-on when it comes to inventory control and practice management. Um, she's currently coaching inventory at three different universities and she's spending her days now with Crampton Consulting. Um, so I guess firstly, Tanya, I'd be really interested to know um, how hands-on you have in fact been with infantry control at a clinic level. Oh, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so I managed um, a group of five practices. Um, so we set up um, originally um, from having no infantry on the computer back in the old card days um, to then adding stock onto the computer, um, whether uh, just the pricing, et cetera, to then actually maintaining stock on hand and generating orders uh, through the practice management software. Um, so I was in practice in, in that particular role for about eight years. I also um, managed and worked on Hamilton Island for three years and managed the inventory of the island, which was pretty extensive. Um, so managed the warehouse. Uh, so a really hands-on in, in that respect, both from um, the physical ordering, um, setting up the systems, training the staff. And then I actually moved to Provet um, and worked there uh, for about six years um, in Provet um, as a sales uh, manager, but also looking at the industry as well. So I've seen both sides of the field and I still work in practice coaching um, and assisting with inventory. Great. So we have half an hour with you, <laughs> which I'm sure is going to fly by. Um, so there's definitely some kind of uh, essentials around inventory that I'm going to ask about. Um, but for everyone that's on the webinar, there's a question and answer box down the bottom. And if you have questions that pop up, feel free to write them in and we'll ask those as we go because um, it definitely needs to be of value to you um, over this half hour. We appreciate that you're here probably on a lunch break or maybe you're doing something else while you're on here. Um, so, Tanya, inventory is, you know, quite basic, I guess, in a sense. You, you're buying stuff so you can use it in practice and then you can sell it out. Um, but how, how important is it? I know that clinics are spending, you know, it's the second biggest expense in the practice, but... Like, how wrong can it go if you're not looking at it, you know? <laughs> um, so this is the second largest expense um, over wages within your business. It is critical to manage and monitor your inventory. Um, I'll just step through. I've got a couple of um, examples why. And one of the primary reasons is it's to ensure we deliver really good customer service. So we're able to treat our patients with the correct product at the right time so we have timely treatment. Um, it also increases revenue if we've got the right product. We don't have to delay treatment. We don't have to write a script or wait for something to come in. We can keep our clients happy. It also increases our morale within our teams. So we know if we've got the right product at the right time, our vets in consult actually use um, more positive language. So we find we often have better conversion rates um, due to um, strong inventory control. What can happen if we don't manage our inventory well or we might have gaps in our systems is that we might have some products that fall through the gaps or are often on um, back order or have to be rushed ordered. And what can happen in consult is then if the vet's not confident that the product's there, the way that they present their information to the client can change. So rather than say, what we need for Fluffy is, I recommend we use this product and blah, blah, blah. What I would like to use for Fluffy is, I'd probably like to use this. Let me just go and see if we've got it. And those types of languages can um, reduce some of the trust with our clients and it can have an impact on our customer service. We can also, if we don't manage our inventory, have a lot of waste in our practice. So waste can be products that are expired 
They can be products that are damaged due to the location. So they might be um, heat damage, they might be sun damage. Some products can't be kept at certain temperatures. So that can happen if we don't manage our inventory. Um, one of the biggest ones is the opportunity cost. So where else could our money be used? Could it be used in um, investing in equipment? Could it be used in staff training? And the opportunity costs for your team members as well. So if we're not managing our inventory or there's gaps in our systems, it can take a lot more time for our staff, whether it's stock taking, ordering, receipting, even putting away our goods. Um, some of the small things we can do to manage inventory better actually reduces um, inventory time and therefore we can use that opportunity to generate business income. Mm. So, yeah, quite a lot of opportunities. And what about the, the time? You kind of mentioned staff time just briefly there. Yeah. Like how, how draining can inventory be on time for staff if it's, yeah, not being done as efficiently as possible? Like are we talking an hour or two a week or...? Uh, it, can like, definitely, yeah, it can definitely vary depending on the system that you use for inventory. Let me just um, pop into, um, I've just got a sheet here on some of the general impact on, on ordering. For example, if we're looking at time. So ordering, um, when we survey and look in practices, we do a lot of audits through there. So the order process is from the time where you create the order, so whether you walk around the practice and look at items, um, to whether you phone an order, email, fax, or do it automatically through your practice management software. What we can find is you can have anywhere from 15 minutes to prepare an order to four hours to prepare an order, um, depending on the size of your practice and the systems. So if you aren't maintaining your industry well, or perhaps there are some gaps in your training, it could be two hours um, to do a standard order. And that's not unusual in a lot of practices but there are a lot more efficient ways to do it. Um, so being able to um, track your stock on hand or making sure people use things like point of sale scanners to sell product helps increase your inventory accuracy and therefore will reduce time when you're actually doing your orders, etc. cetera. Um, sharing the inventory knowledge is also important. Um, so one of the things we generally recommend is to have an inventory team. So rather than just have one person in the practice that knows everything about the inventory, there's always one in every practice. Um, it's great to have a person who's passionate about inventory, but we really need to share the knowledge and make sure we have an inventory team and that the processes are documented and the knowledge is shared. Um, that will also increase um, the um, buy-in of inventory in the practice and help with accuracy. So you're suggesting that inventory team would go across all levels, um, so yeah, nurses, yeah. practice managers, vets as well, the owners? Yeah, generally, I mean, um, when we look at an inventory team, generally have the practice manager, you'll have um, the, if, depending on the size of the business, you'll usually have three people in an inventory team in a full, two full-time equivalent vet practice. If you're in a larger practice, your team may be bigger. Um, the top level may be management and they mightn't be in the day-to-day -day ordering, etc. but they should definitely be involved in the monthly looking at your inventory KPIs, um, investigating or understanding why you have variances in your stock take because you'll pick up misfilling, um, what staff training is required when you pick that up, etc. So it is important to have all aspects of the practice involved because inventory is just what you order um, and what you sell. It's um, also your merchandising. It helps with your um, looking at your pharmacy layout. It's the decision on new products coming into the practice. It's um, promotional products, uh, pricing, and that does cover very di various different aspects of the practice. Mm. So I do want to touch on stock taking because I think there's a whole lot of different ways to look at that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I guess you will um, be aware of, like, you know, what good looks like. So is there, like, a, a general framework that a clinic could kind of try and match or stick to in their clinic to, you know, make sure that they're doing the right thing as best they can to start with? Um, the first thing I'd say is that if you're not currently recording your inventory on hand, that's okay. Um, everyone's in their own space at the moment with their inventory. Um, the goal state that we would look for is that the stock on hand matches the stock on our veterinary practice management software. 
So that's the, the goal state that we aim for. And that doesn't happen overnight. Um, so when we're looking at stock taking, in general, um, our gold standard is that we do rolling or um, cyclic stock takes. So small stock takes that happen very regularly. And by regularly, I mean every day. So a small stock take done on a part of the practice every single day. Um, and that 80% of the practice is counted each month. Uh, we don't generally um, count disposables as part of our stock take. It's only about five to 7% of your inventory spend. And because of that, um, and it doesn't generate a lot of income, it's not an area that we waste a lot of time in, but it is important that we do stock take the other parts of our inventory. And some simple ways to do it with our rolling stock takes is to set up uh, locations in your practice. Uh, so most practices when they're doing stock take, they'll stock take the pharmacy, or they'll stock take uh, the reception area, or they'll stock take the wormers, etc. What we recommend is your locations are much smaller and really refined. So a maximum of 10 to 15 products per location. So if we were looking at the pharmacy, for example, Roxy, we may have seven shelves in the pharmacy. We'd have one location, shelf one, second location, shelf two. So really breaking them down so that we can complete a short, sharp stock take and identify areas, areas much quicker. Um, so that's our, our gold standard of counting um, within the practice. When we're looking at error rates, if you're looking at gold standard, we'd want to have a 5% um, maximum variation in the value of stock on hand and 10% maximum variation for the line, um, line variation. Um, so if, if you don't track those now, the dollar variation is um, the difference between what should be on hand and what is on hand. So 5% is what we're looking for as a gold standard. And the line variation is, or the skews, is the percentage of errors for the number of products counted. So if we counted 10 products and we had one product line was wrong, then we'd have a 10% uh, line variation. Right. Does that help? Yeah. And so um, everyone that's listening, I'd be interested to know if that's something that you're doing at the moment um i don't know if you you feel like popping that in the the chat box um just to give us a bit of an idea but what do you do then so you have a stock on hand variation or you have a line variation you know what's the next step from there remember it yeah. So the next step is, um, first of all, re I'm realistic that not everyone everything, and that's okay. But if we do do a stock take, it is important to actually investigate why things are wrong. Um, so we do what's called a root cause analysis report, um, or simply just investigating the products that are wrong. Um, so if, if you do small stock takes, it's much easier to investigate the errors. If you just do one big stock take of say five or 700 products, even 50 products, it can take a really long time to investigate why things are wrong. What we do is we look at products um, and we try and identify why it's wrong. If there's, for example, two flea products that are on there, one's up in a three pack, one's down in a six pack. We have a look at both of those product sales and see if the product sold aligns with the patient and perhaps we've sold um, given them, uh, you know, misbuild it incorrectly, etc. Um, we'd also look for whether the pricing is accurate. So when we're looking at the fee setup, have we got them set up as the correct pack size? Is it the correct mills or tablets, etc.? Because we can often pick up some errors in our stock taking through that. Um, an example of that is a practice I work with when they started um, stock taking their injections. Um, so Convenia was the particular example. I think I've mentioned this one before to you, Roxy. Um, so that product had been incorporated. So some challenges that you have there. So looking at the fee setup, um, also looking at how the product is sold when you're looking at errors. So um, how easy is it to find in your practice management software? If a product has too many words or your staff can't find it accurately, they will often sell the wrong product. So they'll put it as miscellaneous or they'll sell something similar. Um, so if you have products that regularly come up incorrect, 
asking your team members how they find that product and identifying if there's a, an issue with the way it's set into the computer as well. Um, I think if you have small areas, um, for you can then um, make champions in a team as well. So therefore, people take a bit more ownership. So you might have uh, a nutrition area, you might have small animal open selling, you might have pharmacy, fridge, pathology, and a team member may be looking after that and they're quite invested in that. So they'll often um, be able to pick up some changes or why things are wrong as well. Um, so once you've identified why something's wrong, put in a system or do some training so that it doesn't happen again. Um, so make sure all the team know how you, commu you communicate, whether it's a staff meeting, a memo, training, a visual aid, why there's been an error and how we reduce it in the future and track it. So what would be the best way of um, going? Um, I do generally recommend um, keeping a um, actual... Sorry, I think I talked at the same time. What would be the best way of trying to identify those double ups in the system? Sorry, Roxy, you've just dropped out. I'm not getting any voice with you there. That's all right. I'll let you I think continue. You're frozen. I'm not sure if I've frozen, um, but I'll let you continue. Can you hear me, Tanya? Uh, you now, that's great. Yes. So, what was your question, Roxy? Um, how would you go about minimising those double ups in the system? Is it just a matter of like printing out your your product list and going through it line by line, or is there another way? Sorry, Roxy, you'll... I'll let you continue. I apologise, Roxy. I'm only getting about every second word. I think you asked how you minimise the double ups. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's for particular... I'll answer it in two ways. Hopefully, I'll cover what you need. Um, double ups, if it is... Um, one of the most important things is to actually manage your um, actual products inventory on your practice management software. It doesn't matter what software you use. You can use the top of the line software or you can have your... <laughs> oh, I'm hearing... Or you could use an Excel spreadsheet. Um, whatever system you use to manage more inventory, you need to maintain that inventory database as such. So one of the things we recommend is to annually actually audit your practice management software inventory. If you're using um, some of your um, practice management software like Vision, RxWorks, EasyBet, all those types of ones, they do have um, ability to export your inventory and you can actually have a look for double ups and then you can make changes and import it back in quite quickly. Um, so that's one thing you definitely should be um, if you're not already, but reviewing your inventory on your practice management software at least once a year. If you think, oh my gosh, that's overwhelming, I can't possibly have time to do that, mm -hmm. break it into sections and just add, maybe look at two letters of the alphabet each month and so that it's achievable. It's all about um, making a system that works for you or allocating time to do it. We often don't make time for inventory. Second largest expense in your practice. Um, and we see huge opportunity to increase uh, your profit if you manage your inventory well. You pick up missed billings, um, you pick up um, incorrect pricing and a lot of systems errors um, by maintaining inventory. So maintaining your, um, your exporting or looking at the individual pr uh, products um, every year is the first thing. Um, and then also if you've got more than one, the product in the system more than once, you need to look at how you can make it one. So if it's, for example, you might sell something as a single and a six pack, your practice management software will have the capability to break that pack up for you. Only have it in the system once. It'll just reduce the risk of people selling it incorrectly. Mm. It also means that the pricing gets updated. If your product is in the system more than once, how do you know that the price is getting updated on the correct product? 
our team members or if you use automatic downloading of invoices to your system, it will only update the price to one of your products because the code can only be linked to one. So if your team members are selling from this one, if this price is getting updated, you're losing profit. Mm -hmm. So what are your tips around downloading invoices and updating pricing? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure there's a big variance in there. <laughs> um, definitely. So if you, um, a best practice is when the products arrive into the practice. So when you receive your delivery from your wholesaler or whoever it is you're getting your delivery from, um, they should, the prices and the product should be updated on your practice management software within two hours. And the reason we say within two hours is it means that if someone has to sell that product or use that product, we can ensure that they have it at the correct price, but also that it's in the system available to sell. So that also looks at, do you sell products to a negative? Which means, can you sell something if it's not on the shelf? Now, a lot of practices um, still can sell things um, even if the practice software says, minus 35, they can still sell it. Our recommendation is to have your practice management software set to a maximum negative sell of minus one. So what that means is that someone in your practice can still sell one product to minus one. So the practice management says we have zero of that product, but just once to a minus one you can sell it. Um, and that just is in case there's a, an issue with a, a product has an error, etc., but they can't keep continually selling the wrong product or a product that's not officially there. So you pick up on errors. So that means that you need to download your invoices and update your prices quickly to ensure stocks available to be sold. So within two hours is our, our recommendation um, of when the orders actually received into the practice. I live in the real world though. <laughs> you do it on the same day, please. <laughs> definitely do it on the afternoon or morning that it comes is makes a big difference yeah and we talked a bit last week about you know the huge variance in practices and that not every practice can do the same thing because it just doesn't work for that individual unique practice so um what are some other success tips you know i'm sure you've seen where um clinics have really been able to minimize their costs and increase what they're selling and you know they're humming along at a really nice level what do those clinics doing that have in common definitely um the first thing is i think that they establish where they are now and i think that's really important um, and when we talk about where we are now there's a couple of areas that we look at the first is we identify our current ordering systems so we're really clear about how we order how long it takes what technology we use, how we determine what to order. So whether you use mins and maxes or whether the computer tells you what to do or whether it's all in someone's head, etc. So identify the current ordering state. We also identify the current receiving state. So make really clear for yourself and your practice what happens when products come into the practice. And I think it's also important that we identify what actually happens as opposed to what sometimes may be in a protocol. <laughs> I'll often go to a practice and I'll work with the practice manager or the owners and I'll say, step me through what happens with the ordering and the receiving and I get this great book and everything's fantastic. And then I might go with the ordering nurse and it's completely different. So actually go and find out what's really happening um, day to day in the practice. Um, so receiving, when the products come in, how are they unpacked? So a simple tip that really helps efficiencies in the practice is having a couple of different colored buckets the different areas in the practice. So for example, you might have a red bucket for pharmacy, a blue bucket for um, hospital supplies, and a yellow bucket for products. So when products are um, unpacked or ticked off, they get put in the bucket um, for the area, which means that at any time someone else wants to help, they know that those products are marked off, they can be taken to that area. It's just about creating efficiencies and make sure things are, are marked off and People know where everything is at certain times. Um, when it comes to stock taking, practices that um, are able to pick up on fillings and really, really watch their inventory spend, they do do rolling stock takes of 80% of their products every single month. 
and they add it to the duty of a um, your reception AM nurse or a you know a theatre nurse or what have you. It's a part of the daily duties, and it, it's a short and sharp process, counting never more than fifteen products, and it just becomes habit. Um, you don't have to start by counting everything in the practice. Just pick one area and do that well for say a month and then add another area. So it becomes comfortable for your for the team members. Um, so those are um, a couple of things. Downloading the invoices within two hours helps. Um, using a point of sale scanner. So all products that are sold out the front, definitely if you don't have barcodes in your practice management software, get them added in and use a point of sale scanner. You ensure that the correct product is being sold at the correct price. Um, and reducing duplicates in your practice management software will also um, drop that. A couple of other ones, I could, there's so many I could talk for days, um, <laughs> is to review your miscellaneous charges every um, So if people do have the ability to sell something as miscellaneous, make sure you review who's doing it um, and find out why. Because miscellaneous shouldn't be charged on our practice management software and um, we should have a single item um, actually allocated to it, so review that. Um, and also having a look, a couple of simple things. All of your practice management software will have the ability to um, report on margins in your uh, for your products. So just do a negative margin report each month. Um, and what you're looking for is if any products um, has a negative margin, it means it's being sold um, for less than you paid for it. And we'll often find out if there's some errors in the fee setup, you'll pick that up really quickly. Um, so having a look at that um, every month will just make sure that you're getting the best out of those products. Mm. That helps. And, <laughs> yeah, no. And I imagine that there's um, always a, a staff member in a practice who wants, you know, a little bit more to do or they want a bit more responsibility and, you know, why not kind of carve off something like what you're saying and, and give them you know, something to really own. Um, we've just had a question come in. So um, in a multi-clinic practice, we find it really hard to track the movement of stock between clinics. We've tried to track this years ago, but it's very time consuming to then upload the move stopped. So movement was reflected in the in RX works. Um, so it seems like it would be difficult to set a max of negative one to sell to. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, if you're using RxWorks and you do have a point of sale scanner, if your systems are inventory is linked, you can do an internal transfer through RxWorks, which means the, the branch practice or the clinic that wants the product um, can actually select to take it from your stock level. Um, and what we generally recommend is if you are working between practices, is that an internal uh, transfer is created from the practice that wants the product and then the practice that's giving the product that gets taken out of their system. Um, that's the gold standard um, when, when you're doing that. Uh, it is a system thing, so it's getting people used to doing that process. Um, that's the, the gold standard for internal transfers. It can be challenging, I do appreciate. You can set to a minimum two or a minimum three, but the, the problem is that you do have to monitor that. So if you do have your system set to sell to a minimum three, just do a negative stock on hand a report every month. So if that's the way that you set it, just do a negative stock on hand report every month and check what stock is in a negative. And then you may find that those particular products are ones you need to increase the mins and max uh, at, up at your branch practice or perhaps you need to do some training around the ordering processes with those, if that helps. Mm, I hope that's helped answer that question. Um, yeah, I imagine that would get tricky, <laughs> especially if it's hard, yeah. The most important thing is that the product is reflective of where it's gone to, um, because your most branch practices or multi-clinic practices run their own p &L, so we need to transfer those costs to costs. Um, so an internal transfer through RxWorks is generally the easiest way to do it. Yeah. And I don't think we've touched on it, but what about the number of orders that a clinic should do? Like I've seen clinics that do one big order a month. Um, I've seen others that order, do an order every day, um, you know, and everything in between. Um, is there guidelines around, you know, 
again, um, it is dependent on the size and storage of your practice. But our general recommendation is uh, one to two orders per week. Um, if you have your mins and mats uh, set up accurately. And again, if you have good, um, if you're comfortable with the information in your practice management software, which I mean by comfortable, I mean you've entered in the product that's come into the practice from your wholesaler and you're selling it correctly. Your practice management software can actually give you recommendations for mins and maxes. So it gives you um, some knowledge so that you can utilize that as well. Um, but when you're actually looking at orders, one to two a week, if you are doing a bulk order, that's okay. Um, sometimes you will get a benefit um, in pricing if you order maybe four of one product, depending on who you're buying from. So it's just making sure if you do a bulk order, you do it at the beginning of the accounting month so that you have time to sell that product before the payment is due. So if you, for example, um, order on the first of the month and then um, or the 30th of the month, but the billing gets um, finalised on the 1st or the 2nd, you've only got three days to turn that large order. Um, so you end up um, having that sitting and have paid for it. If you order it on the 1st of the month, it gives you that full month um, to utilise the product um, and also get that buy benefit as well. Um, it does come to storage as well. So have a think about if you are doing a bulk order, look at the footfall in your practice. If you're doing a bulk order and stock is kept in a treatment or a locked room 37 steps away or 100 steps away and you're having to fill from that regularly is the footfall benefit for the saving that you're getting um, because we do find sometimes um, when we might do a really big bulk order and we stuck stuff way far away it actually costs us more in the movement time than it would be in the saving of 10 cents etc um, mm -hmm. so one to two times a week um, easy thing to do is to actually um, have beside your phone or ask to track any add-on orders. So if you're adding onto your orders um, every time or more than 50% of the time, you need to review your mins and maxes, okay? Um, because it means that there's a gap in the system. And we know that a lot of practices add to orders, but if you're having to continually add on, um, then we probably have a gap in, in our numbers in our system. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's good. And so we've hit our half an hour mark. So if anyone's got any questions, please um, throw them in now. But what, um, just quickly on the mins and maxes, how often would you suggest a clinic reviews that? Because obviously you have seasonality and, you know, things change. So would it be a, an actually a seasonal thing that you would go in every three months and review or is a different... Yeah, um, we Look at it by therapeutic index. So products that are seasonal, your practice management software has a button, all software does, where you can tick seasonal. And those products, we generally do a report and check their mins and maxes every season. Your other products, we generally um, look by therapeutic index and just review that um, at least every 12 months. If you can do it every six months, that's great. But I do live in the real world of veterinary practice. It's very busy. So alternatively, just make sure you do review your mins and matches every 12 months. Um, on that, if you get a new product in, so there's a new product being launched or you've taken it in, you need to have a look at if there's any products that it supersedes. And if it does, make sure whenever a new product comes in, similar products you reduce the mins and maxes or you take them away so you're not continually ordering and ending up with multiple products in that same range mm. yeah so it sounds like there's a lot of a lot of really simple things that can be done to start inching forward um, for those clinics that are interested and how what's the time frame <laughs> i mean how long's a piece of string right <laughs> i'm really you know, I, um, I think people need to, to gain um, all the wins. They can do it straight away. I'm, I'm a big player in time with inventory. So if you're going from nothing on the computer to automated ordering, you need to give your practice 12 months. If you're going to go from you've got the pricing and everything on the computer, you do a little bit of stock taking, but you don't generate orders through the computer and you want to really streamline your inventory, 
be honest and give your practice six months. Anything under six months, you generally don't get the result. You rush it and you don't get the buy-in from the practice. So a six to 12 month time frame is honestly the, the minimum that we look at to for an inventory project in a practice. Mm. So I guess the beauty here is a lot of the, the practices that IVA is working with are private customers. Um, and so there's some really nice um, opportunities through the IVA ProVet arrangement where there's um, inventory, intelligent inventory modules that clinics can do and they obviously also have their representatives to, to bounce off as well. If, if there is anything that um, you're interested in doing, you've got the support of the ProVet team and obviously Tanya and the rest of Crampton Consulting are available as well. Um, so Tanya, I'm going to wrap up, but do you think we've left anything unturned for now? I'm sure you could, um, keep this going for another couple of hours. <laughs> I could talk for days on inventory. Um, so, um, I suppose the most important thing is, um, just to have a reflection on what your current systems are and what your goal is, because everyone's goal is different. Um, as Roxy said, if you are a ProVet client, um, there is a really good, um, online program, uh, with some actions that you can use. But alternatively, um, just look at what you are doing and how you want it to look in the future and just give yourself some bite-sized steps um, and, and you will get there. It will improve um, your patient care. It will also reduce stress in your practice. You won't have people racing around looking for something, asking everyone where it is. Um, mm -hmm. So it opens communication within the practice and um, it, it is a really critical area that we need to focus on. Mm. Well, Tanya, thank you so much. I really appreciate your, your time and your knowledge. <laughs> I'm sure some of our members will be in touch. Um, I have recorded this, so I'll be sending it out to everyone. And I'll also include in that email um, all the different options that are available with ProVet and Crampton as well, if you want to take any additional steps in this area. Um, but thank you so much, Tanya. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. For Yep, thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.